Why don't you tell us what we're going to okay. take a shot at today? Yeah, I was about to tell you before. Um, what we're going to do, the next three songs are an example of why I refer to the White Album as a trite album. next three songs are kind of super simplistic. Uh, one, one is okay, uh, but it doesn't blow my skirt up. Um, and then the two are just absurd. In fact, I was th time got a little late this morning, but what I was thinking of doing was going through every song on the White Album and crossing out every song that I thought was a waste of space. Oh. And I'm sure we could come up, we could come up with like a 12-song album. Oh, really? I, I'm pretty sure. You would yeah. eliminate, what, about 10, 12? Uh, yeah, just a quick look-see. Look uh, we'll probably have plenty of time today because these songs we're going to go through are fast. All right, so back in the year, so, so Dear Prudence, Glass Onion, check. Uh, Obladi, Oblada. Okay. Uh, Wild Honey Pie. Uh, Bungalow Bill, okay. Um, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, yes, of course. Happiness is a Warm Gun, yes. Martha, My Dear, yes. I'm So Tired, yes. Blackbird, yes. That would be an album right there, actually. Okay. That would be a great record right there. Uh, Piggies, it's a well-written song. Uh, but I think I would go for Savoy Truffle out of, uh, out of uh, Harrison's tunes over that one. Okay. Um, Rocky Raccoon we're going to do today. Pig, uh, Don't Pass Me By, the Token Ringo song. And Why Don't We Do It in the Road. Okay. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Okay. Next comes I Will, Julia, Beautiful. Birthday, garbage. Your blues, it's... It's good, but it's not worthy of a Beatles song. It, it's okay. Mother Nature's Son, I personally think is kind of lame. I think it's kind of dorky, but it's a pretty song. Uh, everybody's got something to hide except for me and my monkey. I'm on the fence about I mean, I would, if I was putting this album together, I would put that on the 50-50 list. Endangered, yeah. Yeah, right, <laughs> endangered species. <laughs> but not worthy of saving. Sexy Sadie is nice. Helter Skelter, I think that song's a waste of time. Um, long, 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 that's a Harrison song, boring, uh, Revolution 1 is enough, Revolutions for one album. Okay. <laughs> uh, Honey Pie, that's a cute little song of 50-50 on that, Savoy Truffle I, I keep, Cry Baby Cry is a good song, uh, it's a little pretentious on the lyric side of it, you know, he's trying to be Dylan-esque there. Revolution 9, Y, and Good Night. Yeah. So that, that's my take. I mean, I, there's a lot of songs. I, I must have mentioned at least 10 songs. Yeah. Which would oh, leave yeah. us with a 20-song record, which is still too big. Yeah. Uh, so, first song we have is uh, Rocky Raccoon, okay? in high progression for the rest of the song. Really? Nothing else happens. Even when the uh, rinky-dink piano solo comes in, it's still based on the same chords. Okay. Um, so it's an A minor 7, a D7, a G7, a C, then this classic moving line bring us back to A minor 7. That's That is, is done in a million songs, Simon and Garfunkel, a bunch of other artists. Okay. So, uh, just for an analysis, um, the A minor 7 belongs to the key of C. The D7 does not belong to the key of C. It's the approach chord to the G7. In other words, the 5-7 of G7, or what we say the 5-7 of 5-7. Okay. All right. In other words, G7 is the 5-7 of C. It's right. the, G, the chord that, that brings us back to the... the root chord C. D7 acts as a, a dominant 7 of that G7. All right, That's there basically we go. it. And I'm sure for a layman that means absolutely nothing, but you know, you get the idea. Again, it's a sec what we call a secondary dominant right. borrowed from another key, in this case from the key of G. Okay. Right? Uh, which makes sense because the next chord is a G7. Right? Are there some chords where, are there some keys where it's easier to do this than others? Uh, do what? To use like uh, the D7 and the key of C to, to to use that kind of function. 
Oh, uh, it depends. I mean, if you have your bar chords down, you could do anything with secondary dominance, no problem. Right. All right. Like the way I transposed, for example, uh, the song Piggies into the key of A flat. Mm -hmm. I did it all with bar chords, so it was easy. Again, there's a template for right. all the chords in a key, and I just moved it up. Okay. Um, but if you're talking about non-movable chords, yes, there are easier keys. And I will say, like if, if I'm in the, or it's, uh, you're talking about 5, 7, and 5. Right. So if I'm in the key of G, D7 is the 5, 7, A7 is the 5, 7 of that 5, 7. So that's nice and easy. Okay. All right. Um, if I'm in the key of D, A7 is the 5, 7, and E7 is the 5, 7 of the 5, 7. So again, easy. Pretty easy. Yeah. A, uh, E7 is the 5-7 in the key of A, and B7 would be the 5-7 of 5-7. Okay. Again, a doable chord. Right. Uh, without relying on bars. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we get to E7, we can still kind of get away with not having a bar. And the 5-7 and E7 is B7, and F-sharp 7 resolves to B7. Okay. The next key is B, and then we're into bar chords. Yeah. Okay. Okay. In the key of F, in the other direction... All right. Yeah. Um, on the, the circle of fifths, there's the sharp side and the flat right. side. We're going right to the key of F. The 5-7 is C7, and G7 goes nicely to C7. Okay, That's not there hard. we go. But as soon as we get to B-flat, we have a bar chord. Okay. okay. So the flats, as I've said before, are not as suited for the guitar, especially yeah. for the open strings of the guitar. So. Right. Okay. Right. So that, that's basically it. Uh, we have... You know, uh, A minor is the relative minor of C, so you can either say this is in the quotes key of A minor or this key of C. Okay. All right, so again, we have the sixth chord, the five seven of five, the five seven, the one, and then the passing uh, C over B chord, which is just a passing chord. Right. And then we're back to our six. Okay. Okay. And that's all of Rocky Raccoon. Um, This is all it does, <laughs> all over and over again. So what I'll say is this, um, as far as the technique goes, like for um, acoustic guitar style players, he is hitting the root of every chord. Every important bass note, he's hitting the root of. So you have A, I'm hitting A right. on the okay. A minor 7 chord. And when the D7 chord, I hit the D. D. And the G7 chord, I hit the G. And the C, and then I follow the walking bass. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all <laughs> I can say. I mean, oh. the lyrics are, you know, he created a cartoon character. and yeah. I don't know what, you know. The Beatles got obsessed with, um, I was just reading this the other day, actually. The Beatles loved pulling stunts on the public. They really enjoyed that, like pulling tricks on them. That's why there was all this, like, activity about Paul is Dead and the Clues and all mm -hmm. this crap. And, you know, even as far as, as late as the White Album and Glass on Onion, he says, the walrus is Paul. Like, who, who cares, really? <laughs> you know. Um, the thing was this. Back in the early, there was a there was a song by uh, a really cute little song by um, uh, Peter Paul and Mary called I Dig Rock and Roll. Music. Oh sure, yeah. And it's really cute because they're they're kind of like they were part of this kind of intellectually elite um, folk music scene, but they were open minded about the rock thing, you know. So they they kind of jabbed a little bit fun at the rockers, and and one of the lines is, um, uh, but the radio uh, won't play it unless I lay it between the lines. In other words, hide the message. Okay. And the message was, was either sex or drugs, basically. Okay. So, of course, it wasn't in the early 60s acceptable to outrightly speak about drugs. Well, there sex. was a big hoo-ha about Puff the Magic Dragon and stuff like that. Yes, and actually I heard a radio interview with him, and he said it had nothing to do mm -hmm. with marijuana. Although it's, it's a little odd because you have the word Puff and Jackie Paper. It seems that's kind of strange lyrics there to not be some sort of reference, but whatever. Huh. Um, anyway, anyway, my point is this, like the Beatles were masterful at encoding secrets into their music, mm -hmm. 
But they they made it like a matter of course after a while, even after like it became okay to say the word fuck in, in a song, which Lennon did in his solo record, and uh, and make more overt references to sex, like why don't we do it in the road. Yeah. Um, they still had this habit of trying to encode things, but the things they were encoding weren't... Didn't have a lot of substance to it. No, substance. I mean, you know, yeah. I know that... Uh, like McCartney was a real perpetrator of this. Uh, one of his 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 uh, songs on his first solo album, he claimed was a form he had to fill out, and he made a song about it. Why? Like why? Uh -huh. I mean, it it's it's just this. You know, that's the thing that bothers me about Zappa too. Why write this trite lyrics when you when you could you know be making profound music at the same time? You know. Yeah, I, I'm not <clears throat> I'm not aware of, aware of the the filling out a form song. Although it hits me as, you know, I mean that is that is a, a fact of modern life more and more and more. Yeah. And uh, it's drudgery, and you talk to a doctor, they will t you ask them how much more uh, paperwork do you have coming through your office than you did ten years ago. They will talk in terms of almost like tons of pounds right. of paper. Yeah, they're getting reamed. They, so yeah, so. getting reamed exactly, and uh, that they've had to hire. Really, an office is more about paperwork than it is yeah. about doctoring these days. Yeah. So there may be something on that, you know, I don't know the song. But, I mean, there may be a take on that, oh, this is just a horrible part of human life, is that we're constantly, you walk into any kind of a office to get almost anything, and you have to fill out forms. Yeah. You yeah. know, and uh, so I don't know. I mean, that's just a, that's a guess. I don't know. I, uh, I went to an MD who has the goal to actually... Um, consider that healing someone is more important than him making money. Yeah, there we go. And yeah. he had a notice up in his, his office saying uh, he's not accepting insurance and the reason why is because the insurance companies themselves are loading up the doctors with impossible to fill out forms, all this extra work. So basically they'll be discouraged. You know? Yeah. Uh, and then after all that work, it's usually turned down. So he said, I'm sorry, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to support the insurance companies. And then he made a list of all the insurance companies that he thought were suspect. Oh. The medical insurance companies. Good for him. Yeah. 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 Well, he's also a musician, too, so. Oh, there you go. Yeah. A double. <laughs>